We are seeing uh, further evidence of the hit to U.S. businesses from the coronavirus. MasterCard, one of the latest firms to warn its revenue will be impacted, uh, saying first quarter sales growth will be about two to three percentage points lower than previous guidance. But we've also heard negative comments from Apple, United Airlines, Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble. Joining us now to talk more about the potential market fallout from the coronavirus is David Gersten, Howard Chief Investment Officer at Acorn Advisory Capital, one of the first Tiger Cubs, uh, Julian Robertson, uh, uh, I don't know if it's a spinoff, but Tiger Investment Management, um, macroeconomist, but also a hedge fund manager. You're a macroeconomist. Have you, uh, are you a quick study in epidemiology? You know, and not as quick as you, Joe. Yeah, uh, probably not. <laughs> uh, probably not, but you've had to be, uh, at well, least to some extent. And, and, and I'll just summarize, as a macroeconomist, you think consensus views a tough first quarter, but maybe a snapback in the second and third quarters, but that assumes positive things happen in terms of the, of the spread of the, of the virus. Absolutely correct. And again, I'm not an epidemiologist, but uh, the comment I would make is that it's really too soon to know how this is going to play out. Uh, you know, we've seen some degree of containment in China, uh, but it's picking up elsewhere. And one of the things that I'd focus on is uh, the potential for what I call a panic, which is um, the idea that because people are so concerned, they start shutting down travel, they shut down tourism, they shut down supply chains. And so uh, this is different in certain respects than it's been in the past in that, first of all, China is a much bigger piece of the global economy than it was the last time we had something like this with sure. SARS, for example. And the supply chain there is very important. Uh, we had been seeing uh, what I think were nascent signs of the beginning of an improvement in global manufacturing. The U.S. is far less impacted by this because we don't have a big manufacturing sector, but things were starting to turn in China. Yeah. So just supply chain worries has us at 137 on the 10-year. Just supply chain yeah. worries. A panic Correct. Uh, in travel, for example, in, in Europe, which I don't know if hopefully it doesn't happen, but it's yeah. in Italy, or God forbid here, that's a much, I don't know where bonds go on or where the stock market goes in terms of that. That would be a worst case scenario. I think that's right. Uh, and again, the point is we don't really know how this know. is going to okay. play out. The general assumption is you get a big hit to first quarter output in China, also in Asia, uh, and then they work very hard to get things back online, which is what, what seems to be happening already. They've told people to start going back to work. On the one hand, on the other hand, in Hong Kong, kids aren't going to go to school until sometime in the latter part of April. Well, that, that's what we even heard from Eunice Yoon earlier, that they've told people to go back to work, but you have a tougher and tougher time even getting in and out of your housing yeah. apartment. Yeah. So to, to the bond market point, um, you know, we had seen prior to the virus uh, the market effectively pricing in a cut uh, by the Fed to, in the middle of the year, right. uh, in recent weeks. And over the last few days, we've seen another full cut priced by the middle of the year. So. This is against a background where the Fed has said prior to this, we're on hold. You know, inflation isn't doing anything one way or the other. It's a little lower than we'd like. Uh, rates are arguably negative. Uh, real rates are negative in the United States. And so the Fed said we're on hold. And now you have a market which is pricing two full cuts. And in terms of valuation with, with the stock market, you point out obviously rates are very low. But you make the point, and, it, and it's kind of a, 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 an interesting nuance that, that, I, that I hadn't seen uh, previously, that since the, dis, the market discounts into the future, uh, profit margins have probably peaked. Correct. And wages are probably going up, especially in maybe companies that aren't as well managed yep. as the S&P 500. So the market could discount even with low interest rates or maybe no reason for an expanding multiple. They, uh, is, that, is that your view? Does that sum it up? So are you worried about valuation, even with low rates? Yeah, it's an interesting trade-off, right? The lower rates go, the more people want to adjust the discount factor. But stocks, theoretically, are pricing future growth. Uh, Which and if is you're not be growing much, yeah. how much do you really want to pay for that? And so we had a market that uh, a few days ago, before it topped out, was, was effectively priced at over 19 times forward earnings. Mm -hmm. And still... Uh, arguably in excess of 18 times forward earnings. Depends what you think earnings are going to be, but at 175 for the S&P, 18 times gets you roughly 3150, marginally below where we are right and, now. And so, you've got uh, estimating a, a nominal GDP growth of 4 plus 2% additional because of ongoing buybacks. 
And on that, with that calculation, you think the market's expensive relative to five year, it says here, five year, 10 year, and multi decade Correct. averages. So we're all, even before coronavirus, you're not so sure this is, is ripe for new money. Yeah. One of the points, uh, uh, wholly correct. Uh, well, several issues. One, the yield on the S&P is higher than on bonds right now. Which is and so, that's good. Yeah. So from a competition for capital standpoint, do you want to own overvalued bonds or do you want to own overvalued stocks? The real point is that uh, unless there's a radical shift upwards in potential GDP growth, which seems unlikely on a short-term basis, financial assets are expensive right now. So then are you saying don't buy these dips? I'm not saying that. I'm saying one should have uh, far more circumspect expectations about what one's going to make in the future. Uh, hmm. You don't normally get a bear market unless you're in a recession. Or were, you position, your way to, were you positioned to, uh, to make 31 percent last year in the S&P? No. Um, How'd you do? Less well than that, obviously. Uh, what do you mean, obviously? You're, well, we, you're we are a highly multi paid professional hedge fund manager. You should, we run, you should have done we 50%. Run, uh, well, we're not an equity fund. Uh, okay, we're, right. we're a multi asset uh, fund. And we had a single digit return last year, so substantively less than uh, the S&P last year. Uh, now, with lower volatility as well, but substantively less than the S&P. So at this point, have you gotten less enamored of, of the equity part of the multi asset strategy? Uh, Yes, somewhat less enamored. Again, this is the issue of where do you put your money? What assets are you going to own? Right. Um, and how much can you expect to make? So a degree of caution, I think, is appropriate rather than the expectation that from overvalued levels, you're going to become even more overvalued.